Over the past few years, we've been treated to spectacle after spectacle in the skies as the northern lights have been at their most active in decades. The activity we're seeing in the skies has a strong connection to the activity seen on the sun. Generally speaking, the more sunspots, the higher our odds are of seeing the northern lights. Now, as we're in what's known as the solar maximum, Eric Snydel spoke with Bill Murtaugh, the program coordinator at NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center for a closer look at our current solar cycle and what's next. Every 11 years, the sun goes through a natural uptick in activity at its magnetic poles, like those that we have on Earth at the North and South Poles, and they flip. That means more sunspots, which in turn means more solar flares. In October, it was officially announced that we had entered the solar maximum, or the period of highest activity on the sun, for solar cycle 25. There's different ways we can uh, determine the solar maximum, but essentially it's the number of sunspots, and we're in that period now where we're seeing the most sunspots. So essentially it's a three or three or four year period of, of, of um, sunspot activity is our sunspot ma our solar maximum. Just like with our weather here on Earth, there are positives and negatives that come with this time of increased activity on the sun. If you're chasing Aurora and want to see Aurora as good news, the consequences on some of our technologies, it's uh, not so good news because it can have some significant impacts on those technologies. This includes things like damage to satellites or even potential impacts to the power grid. One of the most common impacts can be to GPS, like we saw this past May during a top-of-the-scale G5 solar storm. An economist from Kansas State University just released a report a few weeks ago indicating the impact of the space, that space weather event on Precision Ag on that day was about a half a billion dollars. As our reliance on technology grows, understanding how these cycles work and being able to predict how active they are becomes all the more critical. But there's still so much about the sun that we don't yet understand. If you look at the maximum right now, it's it's a fair, quite a bit bigger than that was predicted, but it's still just about on average on, on previous cycles, maybe a little below average, but largely it's just inability or lack of understanding of the science of the sun and that whole that whole process of of, uh, of, of evolving the magnetic fields rotating. But there have been major strides in the day-to-day -day predictions, with the strong G5 event in May and the recent G4 storm in October both being predicted several days in advance. We did a good job with the May event, and even last earlier this month we had a strong storm that was almost G5, and we predicted them both quite well. And as for what this means for those of you hunting the aurora, look, at the end of the day, not every solar flare will prove to be effective in producing the northern lights, but the odds are at least in our favor through the remainder of solar maximum.